Chopin's original metronome marking for his eighth study in F major is minimum equals 96, which makes it the fastest semiquaver speed of all the studies. The right hand has many of the kind of florid patterns that occur in so-called passage work. They range from the relatively easy, such as at the beginning, which I might tell you is a downside easier than. But there are other sections which are more difficult, such as this one, which extends the little finger considerably and has repeated notes at the bottom. The left hand sometimes joins in the semiquavers. Now that's not easy for the left hand. It has quite an awkward stretch. Fortunately, the right hand is there to cover it up. Mostly the left hand has a bouncy melody of its own. is perhaps harder to get right than the semiquavers. Of course, the Chopin is a showpiece as much as a study. And Godofsky's first version for both hands is no less spectacular. As you might expect, most of the semiquavers go to the left hand. This is actually something of a mirror of the Chopin because he wants to sustain a bass note at the beginning to support all of those semiquavers. The melody is now in the right hand. Never mind. The real fun and games comes in the second verse where the right hand has to play semiquavers as well as the melody. That section in the shop band with the repeated notes and the little finger extension. And the Godofsky is a little more difficult because he needs to sustain the low A with the little finger as well as put in the semiquavers. So he changes it into this. Note also in the coda where the left hand is playing all the semiquavers and the harmony that the Chopin melody that occurs at this point 
Godofsky develops a little further. Godofsky's fingering. Look at the first page of the E flat minor study. You can see that every note has a little number attached to it, the fingering. And down here, you can see that he's given two alternative fingerings. And you can see the one I've penciled that I prefer. Most composers do not bother putting any fingering into their music. If they do, it's usually a particularly difficult passage or a place where they want a special effect which can only be got with a certain fingering. But Godofsky knew he was being revolutionary in many of the things he was asking pianists to do. And if he had not written such meticulous fingering, it would be easy for a pianist to come across this music and select what they felt was a good fingering at a practice speed, only to find that it didn't work or work as well when played up to speed. Godofsky's fingering always works, and very often it's the only fingering that works. <laughs> the hand sounds as if it is gliding effortlessly up and down the keyboard. If you're not a pianist, or a string player for that matter, you might not be aware that the hand is often making very short, sharp movements rather than gliding. The 
Chomsky's fingering is built around this principle. The hand moves sharply from one position to another and plays a few notes within that position. And the fewer different positions the hand has to cope with, the better. Godofsky has turned this left hand version into a duet, a conversation between a soprano and a tenor, perhaps. to imagine Fred and George punting down the Seine while I play this one, perhaps having an argument in the middle when the sandwiches go overboard and it all ends happily ever after. Anyway, there's a liquid feel to this piece and I have something of a picture like that when I play it. Mm -hmm. 